Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I am Ajay, Cyber Security and Network Security Trainer at Networker Zone. So, so far we have talked about network segmentation. So, today let's understand what is the role of DMZ in the network segmentation. So, first of all, let's understand about DMZ. Now, what is DMZ? DMZ is one of the zone in a firewall. Okay, so we have talked about firewall and about firewall if you want to understand so you can refer to the videos on our channel now in a firewall we have different different zones and most commonly what are the zones that you will see in a firewall you will see inside zone outside zone and dmc zone now inside zone is your trusted network that is your internal network then we have outside zone which is your untrusted network okay and then we have one more zone that is DMZ, which is demilitarized zone. So the DMZ is basically one of the isolated space between your inside network and outside network. That means neither it is directly connected to inside nor it is directly connected to outside. It is between both of them. Now, doesn't matter who wants to access the DMZ from outside if you want to access the traffic has to pass through the firewall from inside you want to access the traffic has to pass through the firewall so basically what is the role of dmz why do we use dmz the use of dmz is what that we don't want to keep the servers in the internal network okay because if we don't have dmz then we are left with two zones which is inside and outside so without dmz you will have to keep your servers in the internal zone only and if you keep your servers in the internal zone, you have to give the public access to the servers. That means from outside, from untrusted network, people will be accessing your server, which is available in the internal network. And if somehow your server is compromised, okay, any of the attacker on the internet is able to compromise your server, then even your internal network is exposed. Okay, even your internal network is exposed to the attackers so we don't want that you you know if your server is compromised then your internal network is also getting exposed or is having a great chance of getting compromised we don't that kind of scenarios right we don't want it so for this reason we don't keep the servers in the internal zone and this is where we keep the servers in the dmz zone which is completely a separate zone right now whenever for outside people they will try to access the server in the dmz zone and if the server gets compromised then still your internal network is isolated okay because there is again a firewall between your dmz and your internal network this is one reason and also another reason is what that let's say you keep your server in the internal zone only and if you're keeping the server in the internal zone only then what if one of the employee in your organization itself is trying to compromise the server and when they will try so so your traffic will never hit the firewall why because it's in the local network only and if it is in the local network that there will be direct communication through the switch only okay the traffic will directly pass through the switch to the server so that means there is no one monitoring the traffic between your internal network employees and the server if you keep the servers in the internal network all right so this is another reason that you don't keep your servers in the internal zone you keep it in the separate zone which is the dmz zone okay so if you keep the servers in the dmz zone then what is going to happen that whenever your internal clients wants to access the server so they have to pass through the firewall okay now in the firewall you can configure a number of policies okay in a firewall we can configure security rules or security policies that to the dmz servers okay to the dmz servers what kind of access are allowed from the outside and from the inside okay and this way what we can do we can isolate our servers and we can segment our network how this is helping because if your DMZ servers are getting compromised, your internal network is still safe. Okay. Your internal network is still safe and one of the employee or any of the employee from the internal network also cannot go and compromise your 
servers in the DMZ zone because they have to pass through the firewall. As well as this also helps in the reporting because if you have only two zones inside and outside, then what will happen? Whenever you want to report the traffic, whenever you want to monitor the traffic to your server, then what will happen? You will go through one of the interface of the firewall and that interface will contain your internal network traffic as well as the server traffic. That will be a huge amount of traffic as well as the number of logs will be very used for that particular interface. So it becomes very complicated to monitor that interface, right? So when you have a separate zone for the servers itself, then what will happen? You just need to monitor that traffic. Automatically your uh, server traffic is isolated or segregated. You don't have to separate it from the internal network traffic. Automatically it is separated. So this is how your firewall DMZ zone is helping you to isolate and segment your network. There are more uh, ways to segment your network that can be used. So about them we'll talk in the next video. So if you find this information helpful, do like the video and I'll see you guys. Bye bye.